we'll be starting off with the chapter of particle physics. Now, this entire chapter has all to do with the atomic structure, the fundamental particles that make up the entire universe, and then the spooky process of radioactivity. So, before we go any further, we will first discuss the atomic structure and some of its properties. Now, when it comes to the structure of the atom, we talk about three subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Protons and neutrons, which are collectively also called nucleons, they're found bundled up at the very center of the atom, in a region that we call the nucleus. Here, we've represented the proton as a blue dot and the neutron as a yellowish-green dot. The electron is this pink dot that we see outside of the nucleus. This is where electrons stay in fixed orbits, much like how planets orbit around the Sun. For this reason, this model of the atom is also called the planetary model of the atom, which was first proposed by Rutherford. Now that we've got that out of the way, let us discuss some of the features of the subatomic particle, starting off with the neutron and the proton. While they both approximately have the same mass, their charges are quite different. Neutrons are neutral and so have a charge of zero, but protons, on the other hand, have a charge that's positive. Both masses and charges have been expressed in terms of two very fundamental constants. U stands for the atomic mass unit, which is equal to the mass of one proton, while E represents the elementary charge, which represents the smallest unit of discrete charge that's present in the entire universe. Now we can move on to a discussion of the electron. Now electrons are quite small, so much so that their mass is about 2000 that of a proton. But in contrast with a proton, its charge is negative and it's exactly equal to minus 1 times E. Now that we've discussed all these features, let me propose a very simple scenario to you. Suppose I handed you an atom and I asked you to tell me how many protons, neutrons, and electrons does this atom contain? But the catch here is that I want you to do all of this without needing to dissect into the atom. So, what would you do then? Well, all you really have to do is look at the periodic table of elements, because there, everything is represented in a very systematic way. And we've shown it in the form of a diagram right here. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see a symbolic representation of the atom that we see usually in the periodic table. X represents the short form name of the element and Z is the proton numbers. And if you consider a neutral atom where the total number of positive charge should equal the total number of negative charges, in that case, the proton number can also equal the total number of electrons that reside outside of the nucleus. A is the nucleon number which represents the sum of protons and neutrons present inside the nucleus. In that case, it represents the total number of nucleons that are present in the nucleus. Now let us apply this to a realistic example of helium. He is its symbolic representation and its proton number is 2, meaning the nucleus of this helium atom should contain exactly 2 protons. And if we consider a neutral atom, in that case, the first shell outside of this nucleus should contain two electrons. On the other hand, its nucleon number is 4, which means the sum of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus should be equal to 4. Now, all of this seems quite straightforward, right? But we know that nature is rarely ever that simple. It turns out that there is this other version of helium that also exists naturally and we've presented it over here. Now, notice that it has the same symbolic representation He and it has the same proton number too. But the difference here is that its nuclear number is three, not four, which means that this nucleus contains one neutron instead of two. What we've encountered here is the notion of isotopes. Isotopes are different forms of the same element which have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons in their nuclei. Now, it must be noted here that the reason we call these atoms the same element is because they have the same number of protons. So, interestingly enough, the only difference between isotopes is that their number of neutrons differ. So, we have reached our first checkpoint. 
we talked about the atomic structure and in doing so we talked about the subatomic particles and their features namely the proton the neutron and the electron we saw how they're arranged in the atom and we saw how they can be counted in the periodic table of elements and through the example of helium we finally introduced the notion of isotopes